Alrighty, in this video we're going to be looking at circular progress. Circular progress is important because you have an application, mobile, web, video game, whatever it is. Sometimes data needs to go from one end to another. Maybe there's an install. Maybe there's just something going on with the network. You need a relay to the person who is using that service, paid or not, that maybe they need to wait a moment. And one way to do that is to use some kind of spinny, circular, maybe even linear indicator saying, hey, we're almost there, we just don't know when. And that way, people don't think your stuff just locks up, and then they refresh it, starting the process all over again, or just adding to more frustration. So let's go ahead and go to the docs, but then after that, hey, we got some examples for you, so stick around for that as well. So let's get to reading. We see that circular progress is a component used to indicate the progress for determinate and indeterminate processes. Now, that is just a fancy way of saying when you know something is going to get finished or when you don't know something is going to get finished. And with circular progress, you could actually jump between you knowing when and also relaying um, when you don't know. So, for instance, there's a prop that we could add that will make it indeterminate and we'll see that in a moment but you could jump between the two so maybe you're downloading something and you're at 59 percent, but then there's a hiccup in the network well you could just change part of this component to just say hey i, I don't know what's going on and then once you get more of a network established you could go back and say okay 64 percent is downloaded but Let's look at how we import it. We have circular progress and circular progress label. These things should have labels that go along with them, so don't neglect them. First, we have a circular progress right here. This is at the value of 80. I know it's not spinning, it's not doing that fun stuff right here, but as you come in and type 80, 95, 15, this will change going in clockwise motion. And at 100%, it'll be fully blue. At zero, it'll be completely gray. And so you could also change the size right here. So this size, we're coming on in. Now, some of these other components you've seen, you have like some kind of size, font size kind of component here. This is just using size, and this is 120 pixels right here. So it's not like it's you know a special prop coming on in, but um, yeah. So we have this here. You can make this you know 5 billion if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it, but... You can see that this is bigger, and I kind of like these, uh, at least maybe a little bit thicker. I don't know, maybe I'm getting old, but I do like, you know, seeing uh, more of this, you know, on my page than some tiny little line. You could also change the thickness here, and I think it's pretty funny that there's a prop uh, called thickness right here. If I had a prop, uh, one of them probably would be thickness because uh, being a developer and uh, not having you know, my metabolism of when I was a teenager, they definitely would have to up this a few pixels. So we have the circular progress right here is at 59, so just over half. The size is 100, so it's nice and wide here. And the thickness is four pixels. If you want to come in and make it 40, super thick, so it looks kind of like this giant donut, you could do that as well. And so we have changing color. It doesn't always have to be blue. We could come in and slap in this prop of color and change it to orange.400 or you know whatever you want whatever your heart desires in here just so that you know maybe you have a certain color scheme on your website and you want it to be orange in this case we could add a label too and i'm a big fan of labels why because i like extra context i don't know if this means 40 30 38 i don't know if the business is just bsing me and saying, oh, it looks like there's progress. I mean, they could do that with the, pro with the circular progress label in the center as well, but I feel that I'm being less cheated if you know the percentage here is upfront, I, I guess. It's just more information and there's less guessing, and you never want your end users to guess. Then we have the indeterminate, which we talked about. Is indeterminate is set to true right here. If you want to set it to false, you just pass it a false value. So say we were at 40%, but we lost a network connection. Maybe we're you know, doing something and we don't know because of some glitch or hiccup. We could switch this um, to is indeterminate when maybe there's not an update from the network in a while. And then once we get a callback here and we determine how much information we have, 
we could then set this back to 40% or 45% or maybe even 60%. You never know. So this is a nice little feature here. Don't neglect it. But I would also think of this prop here as kind of a nice toggle. Um, although, you know, maybe in your first couple iterations or so of your application, um, you know, handling the, the UI for network discrepancies isn't going to be the main focus. So we also have accessibility down here. It says progress has role set to progress bar to denote that it is a progress bar. And uh, progress has um, ARIA value now set the percentage completed value passed to the component to ensure the progress percent is visible to screen readers. So that is super awesome right there. And then we also have some props. Some of them are covered, some of them are not. Feel free to play around with them. That's kind of the fun thing here. I don't cover everything. The docs don't visually cover everything, but sometimes you just gotta, you know, discover, see what works for you. But I like coding. I think we here. I think you were here for the coding. So let's get to coding. For circular progress, for the first example, all we're going to do is use this, um, you know, let's just use the box, because I think sometimes the VStack is a bit overkill, and I don't want to crowd everything too much. The circular progress, though, um, examples are going to be kind of small, so we're going to keep the box here, and then we're just going to show a very basic example for the first one. And we just have this super basic, gray, boring, um, you know, almost like an icon looking thing here, right? So let's come in and add a value size and some thickness to it. Now we see that <laughs> it's considerably larger here. And if we were to change the value here to say 69, you notice that as we get data in here, you notice how it just like the animation, it just is so smooth looking. Like that is really cool. Okay, so it just kind of turns off when it goes up to that. But I think that is pretty interesting. And I don't think you're ever really going to go back from like, you know, 90 down to 70. Um, but if you do, I mean, that's, I mean, it's still cool as you see it increase here. And that kind of slickness, I think, will enable your end users to have a bit more trust and a it just gives it more pop to whatever application you are making. So what we're going to do in the next section is when we come back after taking a quick break is add some just colors, labels to this. And yeah, that simple. So welcome back here. And so we already have the thickness, all this other good stuff going on. But what if we wanted to add some color to it? Because right now, let's keep this at... 50, I think that's easier to see. Let's change the color. And you like how it fades right there. And understandably, I can understand we have color, you have the BG color, you have color theme. So what kind of color thing am I supposed to add? Well, you could always just go to the docs and look, but sometimes, I mean, when you're out there in the wild developing, you might just have to try a few of the different attributes and be like, which one actually applies to this component? So we have the circular progress here, but in order to add a label to maybe what percentage we are at, after my computer yells at me, um, we just we just do this. And so what you can imagine is we have state up here, you know, and it would be, you know, maybe some kind of use effect or whatever it may be that's getting our percentage of how close we are to completing something. And we're both updating the value here and then the text value down here. So as this changes to 55, and this changes to 55, you know, I think that's pretty cool because people are, you know, could figure, oh, we're a little about halfway done. But when you have that, you know, text in here, it adds a little bit more uh, pop to it. And so one other thing I want to add in here before we leave is the attribute in the circular progress is indeterminate. And what does that do? Well, let's just type it out. So this is set to true. They're all set to true. And as this comes in, it's kind of, you know, what's going on here? So I think a good example is, I think it was Ticketmaster. This kind of reminds me of it. When I was waiting in line, it was having a hard time depending or um, deciding how many people are in front of me in line. And so 
once it kind of got the queue set up in the cloud or wherever, and I knew where my spot was, it would then change it to, you know, something, something like this. And what it would do is it would like count down. So, you know, maybe it would say, you know, instead of the percentage, it would say how many people are, are in front of you. And like, you know, as that decreases, it would say, you know, it would get closer to like a full circle here. I mean, it would say, get ready to order your tickets. So indeterminate is a nice way to let the end user know, hey, something's going on. We're processing some data. We're not quite sure where we're at in the process, but we'll get back to you in just a minute. So this is circular progress. It's pretty cool stuff. If you like what I do, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video.